Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor for another Gen 2 in review. Today I will be talking about the one shot emerge option. What one shot does is enables you to install a package or library dependency etc without actually placing that package atom inside of the world file. The world file is a text log that is stored in var library or lib portage world. An example of this file is mine for instance right here. And what we see is all the applications that I have done and emerge dash av and the aim of the atom such as sudo or syslog ng, rar, rpm, etc. Most of these you should see are the main applications like K3B, Site, VirtualBox, LibreOffice, you know, Eclipse, Calibre, KDE Meta for instance. As you will notice, there should not be a lot of dependency files in here. Very seldom should you ever have a dependency or a library type file inside of your world. Why would you never want to have one of these inside the world file, but only the main applications such as say VLC, Kino, etc.? The reasoning is that when you install an application such as say VLC, Clementine, uh, Skype, something like that, you don't want all the dependency files to also be listed in your world file because you want to make sure that the only time that dependencies or libraries are being updated is when the master file or the master application requires the newer version of those libraries. If you updated a library without the applications needing or being able to use that library, you will break most of the programs within your Gen 2 box by updating that library to a newer stable version even if it is stable, VLC, Kino, K3B, for example, may not be able to use the new library because they haven't been updated to work with the new library yet. So it's more important that your applications dictate when those types of dependencies are being updated. Now in the example I'm going to use here, if we, I use KDE as my main desktop. But say, for instance, we wanted to install XFCE4 beside KDE. So I have here emerge just PV for pretend and verbose XFCE4-meta. It's going to go through and look at all the dependencies. Now the point I want to make about this, this is a smaller application that doesn't take a lot of dependencies and I wanted to find something that I could use that would show that even though we're installing X XFCE for dash meta it's pulling in these other 15 applications that are listed here. None of those 15 applications are going to get placed inside the world folder or I'm sorry, the file, but K XFCE 4 dash meta will be placed in the world file if we were to go ahead and install this. The importance of not doing all of these separately and saying emerge dash av lib xfce4 util gdk engines xfce xfconf and so on and so forth is that we don't want to break F xfce if one of those happens to become stable but the whole picture cannot utilize that particular file until everything else is updated Another problem that we sometimes run into is two master programs that utilize the same library. Uh, we'll use example VLC and Kino for instance. Uh, one is a playback utility program that lets you play MP4s and other various video but also can encode. The other Kino utilizes an input from a firewire source 
and then allows you to encode that data into something else using FFmpeg. Now what would happen if say for instance a newer version of VLC was to come out and at that same time it required the newer a newer version of FFmpeg. It could in fact call then the new version of FFmpeg to get installed and then update itself for VLC. However, the next time you try to run a program such as Kino, it may fail because it no longer has the FFmpeg libraries that it was dependent upon to run. That's where we get back to what I talked about in a previous video with the Gen Toolkit and RevDep Rebuild. I won't go too much into RevDep Rebuild right now, but RevDep Rebuild, of course, allows you to find broken dependencies and attempts to fix those types of dependencies. A lot of time when a library gets upgraded, it's normally the last thing that gets upgraded versus leading applications. So a lot of times those other main programs just need to be reinstalled so they can point to the new library. However, in the case of our example of VLC and Kino, one causing FFmpeg to be upgraded, the other not ready quite to use that, you would then have to mask VLC so that it would not upgrade to the newest stable version, but allow itself to stay at its current position. Now, in that case, you would have to do something such as editing the etc portage package dot I'm not sure if I even have a mask just yet but you'd have to edit package dot mask and inside a package dot mask if we could see it there's not much there's nothing in there so we'll see if there's an unmask in there unmask is the opposite of mask what it does here is it's allowing us to install Eclipse SDK and it's as they're equal to Eclipse SDK 3.5.1-R1. That is actually unmasking that particular program and only that. No newer versions, no older versions, just this one. Now, for instance, if VLC needed to be kept at a certain level so that it would use the FFmpeg that's compatible with all the other programs you would have to create then the package.mask with equal and then the where VLC is located in media-video and then the pa and then the vac package version that you wanted to make sure was being kept from installed until the rest of everything else was available to be used by it the only problem with using masking is you have to pay attention and remember in your head when th what things you have masked. Because you might end up with an issue where Kino and all the other programs have updated, it's now safe, and you're wondering, why isn't VLC working? Everything else can be, but there's a mask here, and it won't allow it to be upgraded. And you have to remember to come back in here and take it out so that it can continue to flow proper. One shot is very useful for when these types of programs that you want to install but don't want to be put in that world file it allows you to then install it without hurting your system. It can also be used for main applications that you may not want to ever update again or you're just testing out and you don't want to affect the systems, the system applications that are already there. To use one shot, the command is emerge. If I get right in the right window, emerge dash. I always use av. That's that's practically in everything I do. The a score stands for a dash dash ask. The V stands for dash dash verbose. And then you can either use the shorthand of one or you can use the dash dash 
one shot and we'll just pick one of these packages such as XF uh, conf now, since I've never installed it it should come back and since there should be no dependencies for XF conf it should come back as that's the only package needing installed most likely well in this case it XF conf requires libxf ce4 util and in this case neither one of those is going to get placed into the world file because the bold part right here shows that it's going to be placed into the world file now we're going to say no here and what if we had not used the one shot when we did that so Say we just did dash avxfconf. This will show us something slightly different. We should see still libxfce4 util without the bold, but we will see, as you can see now, xfconf has been bolded, which means it will be placed inside of the world file. Now they don't want you, the maintainers don't want you, to be placing just anything and everything inside of world. You don't want everything to be always checked upon for updates because you're going to end up with a lot more system complaints and problems if you did allow everything to go into the world file. So while it does give you some basic ability to control it by just telling it that you want to install a certain file over another, it also gives you the extra control using that one shot or dash one flag with an emerge. Hopefully I've not confused you totally with this uh, discussion. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to comment, send me a little message, anything like that where you think I may have needed to elaborate a little bit better. I do hope this clarifies a little bit easier for you what the one shot command can do and the purpose of one shot to allow for main applications uh, to be placed into the world file and one shot keeping dependency files out of the world file so you can still install them and fix them if they are broken. Again, like I said, if you have any questions, concerns, problems at all, feel free to let me know and I'll do everything I can to explain it or email or work with you in your specific instance. And as I always say, if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having in, when you're watching this, I ask that you have a good one. Enjoy it. I hope the best of luck to everyone. Thank you again for your comments, your emails. I've enjoyed them a great deal. And this week, hopefully, we will be looking at our flavor of the week, which should be Linux Mint KDE Edition. I believe that's version 15 that's out there right now. It was requested, and I always look at requests if they're given before I just randomly pick a distro that I find off a distro watch to throw out there. So thank you again. Keep those comments and requests coming, and we will keep throwing them out there for you. Thank you for now, and thank you for watching. Bye.